You ever notice how it seems like every popular franchise has a character who doesn't talk, or barely talks? It's a go! And how they are always so beloved? Snoopy? Check. Kenny from South Park? Check. Chewbacca and R2-D2? Double check. Whoa. Pikachu, Groot, Hodor for crying out loud? Check, check, and screw you, Bran! So you know what, guys? I'm just gonna do a bit of a rebrand. From now on, I'm gonna limit myself to saying five things. Matt, Pat, Theory, YouTube, Diet Coke, and subscribe. YouTube, YouTube, Matt, Pat, subscribe, Theory! Ugh, <sighs> Diet Coke. Aren't I adorable now? <laughs>
message upward at the end to make it a question. You don't like Cheetos? Asking whether you like them and clearly implying that you have no taste in snack food. In other languages, pitch can change the meanings of the same word entirely. The best known example is probably Mandarin Chinese, which is a tonal language and has five distinct tones. It has a reputation as one of the hardest languages to learn, particularly for Americans. In Mandarin, the word ma can mean mother, scold, horse, or hemp, and figuring out which one is which depends on identifying exactly which tone is being used. Since I'd probably butcher the pronunciation and get dragged all over the internet for messing it up, I'm gonna let this lady demonstrate. Ma. Lots of languages allow for tonal variation, usually just with a high, medium, or low tone, but there are some exceptions. Wobe, a language spoken in Côte d'Ivoire, has as many as 14 different tones. Now, how does all this relate back to Groot? Well, despite the fact that Groot is only using three words, tonal variations on those words could very easily give us anywhere from three to 14 separate meanings, and then combining those tones together could generate a huge variety of meanings from their combination and that's just the beginning. Length is the next type of prosody, and it's pretty self-explanatory. How long a sound is can affect how it's interpreted. For example, you're more likely to take me seriously if I say hey than if I say hey. The elongation of the second one in English tends to imply that I'm either a little drunk or I'm coming on to you. But any elongation or abbreviation of the way that we say a word in English isn't going to change what the word fundamentally means, just how we interpret it. But in other languages, the length can absolutely change the literal interpretation of the words as well, with one of the best examples being Morse code. In Morse code, sequences of short and long beats, known as dots and dashes, are combined to form letters that'll eventually spell out a message. Now, you're not gonna get a lot out of the phrase I am Groot if you're thinking in Morse code terms, that's only three beats. And it takes a full 18 beats in Morse code just to say Diet Coke without even adding hashtag not sponsored. On the other hand, it would be perfectly feasible that there's a difference in meeting between I am Groot and I am Groot! While it's hard to measure the lengths of words exactly, you can use music as a proxy, and at least say that you can compare the length of words to a whole note, half note, quarter, eighth, or sixteenth, and that gives you a lot more room to work with. So as long as Groot can keep time by tapping his... I don't know, he doesn't have toes, his roots, I guess? He can get a lot of different rhythmic variations out of that single catchphrase. We'll add how many different variations to the calculation in just a minute. The next bit of prosody for us to consider is the one that I experience every time I get a phone call from a number that isn't saved into my phone. Caress. Or even when the number is saved into my phone. It's a phone, I don't want to talk to you. Also known as accent, or emphasis, or prominence. Ironically, linguistics can't make up its mind about what it wants to call its own terms. Anyway, the meanings of phrases and sentences can change dramatically when we either stress or don't stress a certain part. My favorite example of this is actually a meme that's melted the brains of Redditors for years. The sentence, I never said she stole my money, has vastly different connotations when you stress each different word. I never said she stole my money indicates that somebody else accused her of being a thief. I never said she stole my money implies that you think she probably jacked your wallet but you weren't going public with that. I never said she stole my money means that she stole your bike or your heart or your Netflix password and so on and so on and so on. This one is pretty binary in that you can stress a word or you can leave it unstressed, but that still multiplies the number of ways Groot can say, I am Groot, by a factor of eight. I am Groot. 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 Eight. Eight different varieties. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Vin Diesel, eat your heart out. And the last bit of prosody we're discussing is timbre. Talking timbre of a talking timber, am I right? Oh, the dad jokes are just coursing through my veins today. Timbre is the hardest of the prosodic elements to define because it's pretty subjective. But in layman's terms, it's the sound quality that's being produced. This can get super technical if you start using terms like micro-intonation, prefix, and spectral envelope. But we all experience timbre in ways that are easier to describe, like vibrato. There's certainly a difference between saying Groot in a normal voice and modulating it to Groot. And then you've got things that are hard to quantify but easy to differentiate, like sound quality. Like in Dumb and Dumber, Jim Carrey's most annoying sound in the world. <coughs> Okay, okay, cut it. That's enough. The most annoying sound in the world is just a note that is obviously going to sound a lot different from the same note played for the same length at the same volume from, say, an oboe. 
One sounds like music, and the other one sounds like a goose being shoved through a paper shredder. Fun fact, in college I took a voice class that focused heavily on timbre. Our professor made us develop a voice called the Hollow Wood Voice. I literally spent a semester trying to talk like Hollow Wood. Also, Metal Voice! Metal Voice! There it is. That's what I did for an entire semester. Ladies and gentlemen, the life of a theater major. Ironically enough, even with a name like Hollow Wood, I am still no better at translating Groot. What a waste. That was Hollow Wood. This is actually part Hollow Wood, part Broken Earth. Putting that college education to use. Now, from here, we can keep going down the old timbre road if we were to include things like coloration and sound quality and vibrato, at which point the permutations of I am Groot would be infinite. But timbre rarely affects the meaning of language, it more affects the experience of it. Morgan Freeman's voice doesn't fundamentally change what's being said, it just makes it more soothing and buttery. What does the fox say? A ring-a-ding-ding? -ding? I don't know what it is with Morgan Freeman in my episode lately, but mmm, like butter. Therefore, I'm gonna leave Tambor out of the calculations, though Groot's Tambor would definitely fluctuate based on his mood. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. So is there enough variation in the way that Groot can say those three magic words to make it an official language? Well, let's imagine a best case scenario. If we say that Groot's language has as many notes as Wobay's 14, that length can be distinguished into whole, half, quarter, eighth, and sixteenth notes to create different meanings, and that the meaning changes when a word is stressed or unstressed, well, we get a lot of different ways of saying that phrase. 2,744,000 ways, to be exact. Maybe that's being a bit too optimistic, though. So if we keep the tones, but instead of using all those differentiations in length and instead focus on whether the word is short or long, like in Morse code, we still end up with 175,616 different variations of I am and Groot. For comparison, the second edition of the Oxford English Dictionary gives the English language a strangely similar number of words at 171,476. So the number of ways that we can say I am Groot are at the level of the English language, not too shabby. I, for one, am pretty darn happy with those findings. We have made a solid case for Groot's language here, but I can see you arguing that this can't actually work because there's no real-world language that works this way. No language just works with three words and just modifications in tone and rhythm and stuff. There's no proof. And, you know, that's a reasonable complaint, or at least it would be if it were true. The fact is, plenty of languages exist with limited vocabularies. The created language Tokipona only has a hundred and 23 different words. And while it relies on creating compounds to create more complicated ideas, much like German does, it's able to express a lot of complex thoughts. But that's a manufactured language, not a language with any native speakers, says you, the stickler who should really stop watching my videos and just start cashing in on your vast trivia expertise. Jeopardy is calling to you, friend. All right, so if you only want to count languages that are native to a specific real-world culture somewhere on planet Earth, at this moment, there is a real-world language that gives us a new minimum of words in a vocabulary, and that number is zero. On the Canary Islands, the native Silbo Gamero language is composed entirely of whistles. <laughs> no spoken words whatsoever. That sounds like you probably can't say much with it, but you would be incorrect. So there you go. Groot's three-word vocabulary is three more words than a language actually needs. Which then by proxy means that we could learn to speak Groot, right? Fans could gather at Comic-Con like Trekkies do at conventions, except instead of speaking Klingon, they'd be speaking Groot. No, you can't. As much as I would love to see it, according to Maximus the Mad in the War of Kings series, it's likely impossible. Groot only sounds like he's repeating his name over and over because of his hardened larynx. And the key to understanding him is to listen to the the sigh of breeze beneath it, the nuance of meaning. For one, listening for some kind of magical breeze is not really an area of prosody, but more relevant is the hardened larynx bit. Humans do not have a hardened larynx, and it's not worth trying to figure out a way to get one because in people, a hardened larynx is actually a serious medical condition. In this condition, called Presby larynx, people have incredible difficulty speaking loud enough to be heard easily, and usually have to find other nonverbal forms of communication like sign language to help. So at the end of the day, the condition that would allow us to speak Groot would actually prevent us, as humans, from speaking any words loud enough to be heard at all. Guess we'll just have to stay rooted and come to terms with the fact that when it comes to speaking Groot, we won't be able to branch out. But hey, I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. 
holiday theory wear is still available. So if you like soft, cozy, oversized things with hoods and in the color black, well, boy howdy, did we create something for you. We're calling it Holidays in the Hood. Because, well, it's cold outside, so we wanted to keep everyone cozy warm with a hood. Hats, coats, sweater dresses, PJ pants, even this film theory hoodie has a hood. Ladies and gentlemen, unbuckle your safety belt because we have reached the altitude of peak comfort. Links are where they always are, down in the description below. And if you order in the next few weeks, it's all guaranteed to arrive before Christmas. But don't wait too long because a lot of the items are selling out fast.